Hello, my name is Jeff Johnson and I am the manager of technical services for Citation Customer Support. For the next few minutes, we are going to discuss the maintenance record keeping requirements for the Honeywell Primus 2 integrated radio system. But first, a little background. In 1989, Cessna began installing the Primus 2 system in production Citation aircraft. Two identifying features of this system are the CRT-designed radio management units that are installed in the cockpit and used to tune the radios, and the modular construction of the integrated communication and integrated navigation units. What you're looking at here is an RNZ850 integrated navigation unit. The integrated communication unit looks very similar to this box. Within these units are separate, individually replaceable modules that perform the aircraft's navigation and communications operations. Within the communications unit, you'll find three separate modules. The VHF communications module, the transponder, and a cluster module which is used to control the comm unit's input and output functions. Within the integrated navigation unit, there are four separate modules. The nav module that provides the VOR navigation and ILS functions, a DME module, an ADF module if the aircraft is so equipped, and again a cluster module that is used to control the nav unit's input and output functions. The Primus 2 system is found on 10 late model Citation 2 aircraft, many Model 560 Citation Ultras, Citation 5, and Citation Encore aircraft, all Model 560 XL and XLS aircraft, 71 late model Model 650s, and all Citation 10s. As already described, one of the key design features of the Primus 2 system is the ability to replace separate modules within the integrated navigation and communication units. For this reason, separate data plates, part numbers, and serial numbers are associated with each of the components. As an example, on the front face of the integrated navigation unit, you'll find a data plate that displays the unit's part number, its serial number, and modification status. A similar data plate is found on the front of the integrated communication unit. Each of the modules within the integrated units also bear a data plate, and the data plates are visible by simply turning the unit over. Cutouts in the bottom wall of the integrated units allow you to read the data plate of each of the modules that are inside. In this example, here's a close-up of the bottom of the integrated navigation unit, and you can see the data plate for the nav module. Since the integrated units and each of the mod modules inside bear different part and serial numbers, and the Primus 2 system is designed to allow individual module replacement, SESCOM has separate line items for tracking each of these components. In this SESCOM 10 report from a Citation 5, you can see the installation information for the number one integrated navigation unit on this top line. This line shows the installation date, the part number, and the serial number. Below it, you can see the information for each of the four modules that's inside the integrated nav unit. It's this issue that has led to some problems with maintenance record keeping. While researching compliance for Airworthiness Directive 2010-0702, Citation Customer Service discovered that SESCOM records for many Primus II equipped aircraft appeared to be inaccurate. This SESCOM record on the screen is a good example. Notice that the number one integrated navigation unit was replaced in August of 2011. However, 
the installation date for the four modules within the box is still shown as November 18, 1989, which was the delivery date of the airplane. In all likelihood, the technician that replaced the nav unit in 2011 was not aware that he had to also update the serial number information and the installation date for the four internal modules. Consequently, in all likelihood, the serial numbers for the modules shown in this SESCOM report are probably in error. After the Primus 2 system was introduced, Cessna released these informational service letters to help explain the record-keeping requirements for the system. However, in the many years since these service letters were released, and considering the large number of shops and technicians working on citations, knowledge of these requirements is not widespread. So in conclusion, here are my recommendations to avoid errors in maintenance records for the Primus 2 system. First, take a few minutes and review one of these informational service letters for the maintenance record keeping requirements. Service letters were never released for the Citation Excel or the Citation 10. However, the information in these service letters is exactly the same and is applicable to all aircraft equipped with the Primus 2 system. Second, if you choose to install a complete integrated NAV or COM unit during maintenance, remember to also note the part number and serial number for each of the individual modules on the maintenance transaction report. And finally, if the installation date information for the integrated units and modules on your current SESCOM report seems suspect, verify the information during a convenient scheduled maintenance event and advise SESCOM accordingly. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions on this topic, don't hesitate to contact the Citation Customer Service Hotline anytime, day or night.